Welcome to In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson. Join us as we learn from area professors and teachers as they bring you their thoughts and knowledge of the study of the Sunday School lesson for today. Now, here is today's program. Well, happy Resurrection Day to you. Uh, joyous Easter to you and to you, David. Uh, Same to you. Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. Uh, the Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Um, well, we, we get to have an Easter lesson today and actually talk about the resurrection. Right. Do we? They were, they were kind <laughs> yeah. enough to give us a, a passage uh, in the International Sunday School Lessons that focuses right on Easter. Yeah. Uh, so we're glad to do that. We are still in Matthew. Right, last where, chapter. Uh, where, so we have a series of five lessons from Matthew. And we've been seeing some important themes traced through that all the way from the beginning, back... Uh, from the genealogy and the visit of the Magi. Mm -hmm. Some of those themes keep popping up all the way through. But yeah. we come now to Matthew's account of the resurrection. Actually, I shouldn't say Matthew's account of the resurrection because not one gospel describes the actual rising of Jesus from the dead, does it? It just declare he is risen. Yes, we get it's to see the evidence of right. it. Uh, uh, the, Nobody the, stood and watched it happen. No, yeah. and um, and no one attempts a description of it right. either because they hadn't seen it. But I, I suppose how could you describe yes. such an event, or how no. how could a person process an event yeah. if they had seen it? So I think uh, we're better off having the evidence of it mm -hmm. rather than a description of it. Mm -hmm. And the primary evidence of the resurrection is an encounter with the risen Lord. Yes. Yeah. And the Gospels are full of those descriptions mm -hmm. uh, from various perspectives. Uh, Jesus uh, appearing to women at the tomb and disciples back in hiding in Jerusalem. Yeah, and some on the road to Emmaus. On the road to Emmaus. And, and as Paul says later, 500 people at one time. Yeah, back up in Galilee evidently. Yeah. Uh, where he had so many followers. So many, many post-resurrection appearances mm -hmm. by Jesus, which supply us with uh, the evidence that we have mm -hmm. for that. But today we're in Matthew 28 with uh, Matthew's description of the encounter with Jesus. Uh, we've skipped over since our last lesson, obviously some really important events. We've mm -hmm. had the Last Supper, uh, Gethsemane, the arrest mm -hmm. and betrayal, the trials, uh, the, yeah, the trials and the, the flogging and mockery mm -hmm. that Jesus endured, and the crucifixion and the burial. The burial, and, yeah. and the witnessing of the burial to the point where they knew where the tomb was, they knew which tomb it was. Yeah. These women whom we meet at the empty tomb here were at the crucifixion, mm -hmm. they were at the burial, and now they're here to see the empty tomb. So they mm -hmm. are a very consistent witness mm -hmm. to and they, what happened. And they don't come to the tomb expecting it to be empty. They come expecting to finish the job of preparing the body for continued burial. Yeah, that's a really good point. A lot of people kind of discount the resurrection as a function of the wishful thinking yeah. or expectation of the followers of Jesus. They weren't expecting it. They weren't. They're expecting to find a body to embalm. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the disciples, as, as you mentioned, um, I think last week in our lesson, uh, part of the reason why they had such a hard time accepting the testimony of the women is that they just weren't expecting right. the resurrection. They couldn't even imagine it. Yeah. So, um, so these, this is important e events here today. Well, let me jump right into our, our passage, which is Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 1. Mm -hmm. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Don't be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples 
He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You're to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we'll satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Hmm. As if just an empty tomb were enough, yeah. it, it was not. Right. So their, their testimony didn't keep the good news uh, right. contained for, for very long. Yeah. Well, we start with a mention of the timing here. We've moved from... Um, uh, Friday when the crucifixion took place through the Sabbath when the Jews had to stay Rest. inactive mm -hmm. uh, to the early, early morning hours of the first day of the week. As soon as it was dawn. Yes, yeah, as soon as it was dawn. The Gospel of John says these events happened at deep dawn. Mm -hmm. I love that phrase. Mm -hmm. it, it's, there's barely any, any light <laughs> in the sky, but, yeah. but it is dawning. So the Sabbath would technically have come to an end uh, the previous evening, Saturday evening, right? Mm -hmm. So we're now into Sunday, the first day of the week, but it's still barely, barely dawn. Yeah. Um, by the way, this mention of first day here is what uh, gives us, our, uh, as Christians, our custom of worshiping on the first mm -hmm. day of the week. Yeah. And I, I, I wish we reminded each other of that more often. I think a lot of Christians don't even know why we worship on Sunday. Uh, but it's Resurrection Day, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. The Lord's Sunday. Day, yeah. as it's referred right. to. Yeah. So today is Easter. We're celebrating right. Resurrection Day. But, but uh, we really celebrate Resurrection Day Every Sunday. 52 <laughs> times right. a year, yeah. not just one time a year. Yeah. Okay, so now who is at the, empty, uh, at the tomb early, early in the morning? Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Right. And, of course, Magdalene is not a last name. Yes. It's her right. location. She's okay. from Magdala. Magdala. <clears throat> and where was Magdala? Well, that's a little village. Uh, she... Yeah, it's up up in Galilee. Yeah, in, uh, in Galilee, but and it's on the Sea of Galilee. But uh, it's it's not a prominent place, but right. a major city. Right. And her background is such that she got a bad rap through history and was accused of immorality and and being a woman of bad repute yeah. and so forth. There's no scriptural evidence for that whatsoever. She had had demons <laughs> mm -hmm. moved, removed from her mm -hmm. by Jesus. And she was very faithful to him and, and followed his ministry and served in many ways. But there's no evidence of that kind of a yeah. bad background. Uh, this little theory that she was a prostitute or something like that, there's, there's no evidence right. for that. <clears throat> um, Jesus had ministered to her, and then she turned around and ministered to Jesus. Yes. Yeah. She followed him regularly, one of the women who followed him throughout Galilee, mm -hmm. and one of the women who uh, bankrolled his, his yeah. ministry and, yeah. and gave financial support to him mm -hmm. and the, the other apostles, yeah. the other disciples. Now, the other Mary... There are so many women named Mary, we don't know which one this is. Mary uh, is a version of the Old Testament named Miriam. Mm -hmm. And so Miriam was very important in the Old Testament. So it turns out to be one of the most popular Jewish right. names yeah. of Jesus' day. Um, so we don't know. There is another Mary mentioned in Matthew chapter 27 who's called the mother of James and Joseph. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that may be that Mary, but that doesn't really help us very right, much, yeah. does it? And, and there are half-brothers of Jesus named that, 
but that's not the way we refer to his mother. Right. So. There are a few scholars who suggest that this is Mary, the mother of Jesus, but I think it's virtually impossible yeah. that that's, this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Right. That she would have been named second, that yeah. she wouldn't have been identified as right. the mother. Uh, yeah. I don't think it can be. Mm -hmm. Now, it says that they came to look at the tomb. Um, uh, I guess, I don't know, just to check it out? Well, or, uh, the, Luke says in more detail that yeah. the women were watching when Jesus was placed in the, in the tomb yeah. because it was done so hurriedly that they wanted to come back first thing in the, after the Sabbath and finish the job of right. preparing the body for right. burial. But look at the tomb is a strange way to say it. It is. Uh, even, even the other Gospels, though, that say they want to come back and complete the uh, burial procedures um, suggest that they don't know if they're going to be able to get into the tomb yeah. or not. Yeah, worried about that Who stone. will roll away the stone. Yeah. So it could be that look at the tomb means check out to see if there's anybody there who could give them access yeah. to the tomb. Yeah. And it... The, the word look at, uh, I, I checked, it doesn't mean glance. It means to study very carefully. Hmm. And so uh, I think that supports the interpretation see we're kind of moving the, toward. Yeah, see situation. what the situation is. Yeah. See if there's any chance that they can get access. Hmm. Um, so I think that's what's going on here. Yeah. Now this earthquake that's mentioned in verse 2 it's hard for me to know if this is a generalized earthquake that's shaking the whole region or whether it's a more localized shaking associated with the arrival of the angel at that spot. Yeah. Not that it matters that I but understand that. it was violent, that. whatever it was. It, it was, was violent. But the angel in coming, I, I can remember as a kid, I, I guess I had the impression that the angel came and released Jesus mm. from the tomb. That's not the case at all. It does say the angel rolled back the stone. Rolled the stone away, but he yeah. was already risen. But, yes. And he was removing the stone as a testimony to those who came, the women and, and others right. know, later, yeah. that he was risen. Yeah. So it's not like the angel arrived, opened the tomb, Jesus emerged, then the women arrived. And right. it, that's not the order. No. The, the women arrive, then the angel opens the tomb, and it's empty. Yeah. It's already empty, right? right? Okay. Yeah, he good. has risen. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's a good reminder. Yeah. And let's remember that angels are the messengers of God who come to communicate. So the angel's main role is not as tomb opener. Right. <laughs> it's not, this He's is a not, messenger. This is not Gabriel Tomb Raider <laughs> or something. He's a messenger, and it's the message that he gives to the women that really is the key here, mm -hmm. that, um, that Jesus has risen, that's the key, yeah. and here's what you need to do in response. Yeah, but as always, every time an angel is, is mentioned in Scripture, it's scary to the mm -hmm. people who are there. The, our picture of little women with with wings and halos and so or forth. Cherub, and, yeah, <laughs> chubby babies. babies. <laughs> that's not the picture in Scripture. No, and, no. and the first thing he says is, don't be afraid. Uh, angels are, are frequently pictured as a kind of warrior mm -hmm. uh, beings, almost. Yeah. Um, and even Peter has to be told not to be afraid when he confronts. Yeah. Uh, the appearance of the angel is is frequently described as light and white. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing is how similar this description is to the description of Jesus' appearance at the Transfiguration. Transfiguration, yeah. yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. But it was scary enough that the, the guards were so afraid they shook and comatose. They yeah, were, yeah. Out. The word the word shook is the same root as the word earthquake. It's seismos. Mm. We get like seismic activity yeah. or seismograph. You know, so there there's an earthquake that takes place within <laughs> them, and uh, became like dead men. You think probably refers to some They're kind just of out of it. Yeah, coma like almost. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some kind of catatonic. Um, so when the women situation. are speaking with the angel, or the angel speaking with the women. Uh, they're probably unaware of it. Uh, the, the, the guards, guards are unaware yeah, of it. Yeah, the guards are not aware yeah. of it. By the way, while we're told, since we've just met these guards here in verse 4, I'll have to confess that for, for a very long time, I assumed that these guards were Roman soldiers who had been sent by Pilate to guard mm. the tomb. 
And in looking back more recently, I've realized that was a mistake. And other, other of our viewers may also have had that confusion. You've understood this better for a long time, uh, so explain it to us. It appears that they were, were temple guards because mm -hmm. the, the priests came to Pilate and said, we've heard rumors that, that he's talked about resurrection, somebody might come and steal the body. And Pilate said, you got the authority, make it as secure as you can. And so they apparently, having guards, sent them. Now the guards at the crucifixion were Romans, right. but the ones at the tomb appear to have been temple guards. Yeah. But this, this thing, make it as secure as you can. I was mentioning earlier, I, I had a reading years ago, and I, I've lost it. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know where it was from. But it, it took that quote where Pilate said, you know, make it as secure as you can. Uh -huh. And it was, it was saying that, that uh, uh, so the, the spiders constructed their web across the tracks to stop the locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> it's the picture of spiders making a cobweb to Trying stop to the train. Trying to make something secure, but, but hopeless to stop. When the resurrection was coming. With, Those guards were not going to stop resurrection power, a few sealed, uh, few seals on a tomb were right. going to do anything. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's interesting. And by suggesting that this is the temple guard, not Roman soldiers, we're not suggesting that they would have been any more lax or inefficient. Mm. In fact, the temple guard, under the authority of the high priest, have way more reason to try to um, thwart off any suggestion of resurrection mm -hmm. than Roman soldiers do, because mm -hmm. Roman soldiers don't give a hoot yeah. about all this religious stuff. Right. But the high priests really do care. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, well, next, the angel turns uh, his attention to the women and tells them not to be afraid. Right. And, and he says, you know, the, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he's not here. He has risen. Mm -hmm. And this thing of, of looking for Jesus, and now he's saying, come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell. Yeah. Well, what we have here in verse 6 is the climactic moment of our passage, He has risen. Mm -hmm. And I guess in a sense it's the climactic moment of the gospel right? and the climactic moment of the Christian religion. The turning point uh, of all history. Yeah, yeah, He has risen. He yeah. is not here. So the tomb is already empty, as you pointed out earlier. He is yeah. not here. Um, and the angel confirms that what the women came looking for was a crucified corpse, right? not a risen Lord. Yeah, they weren't expecting that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but you're right, come and see. Th that's the phrase that's used early on in the Gospel of John to talk about the, the calling of disciples to, mm -hmm. to come and encounter Jesus at the very beginning. Um, there in John chapter 1, the words of Andrew and the words of Philip and yeah. uh, come and see. In the face of doubt, um, you don't believe it? Well, just come and check it out. Mm -hmm. Come and see. Mm -hmm. But here, it's paired with go and tell. And that's a, that's a delightful combination, it isn't is. it? It is. Yeah. Come and see, come and and go, see and tell. go and tell. Yeah. Now, we need, to, we need to take verse 7 very seriously. What this means is that the very first proclaimers of the resurrection, the very first evangelists. Good news. The very first shares of the good news are these two women. Yes. Yeah. And that's true in all four Gospels. Yes. That it was women who came to the tomb expecting to find a body. Mm -hmm. And it was women who were told by the angel, go mm -hmm. and tell others. Mm -hmm. And the idea that women can't speak, <laughs> apparently God didn't get that message no. because the angel said, go and tell. Yeah. This is the messenger of God telling women that they have the responsibility to tell apostles to tell apostles and and therefore the world yeah. uh, of the greatest good news about this turning point in yeah. history that we call the resurrection of Jesus yeah. so uh, we need to be careful that we don't put limitations on God mm -hmm. uh, where God has willed mm -hmm. um, uh, according to his own purposes. Yeah. So uh, these women have an incredible 
opportunity and task. Mm -hmm. Go tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. Now this going ahead of you into Galilee, there you will see him, um, is the message they, they bring. We don't want to take that so in, in such a limiting way that we don't allow Jesus to do what he actually did, which was meet people even before. Uh, encounter people even before they got sure. back to Galilee. Right. Because Jesus is about to encounter these women just mm -hmm. right outside of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And then we learn from other Gospels that Jesus is about to encounter peop uh, some of his disciples in Jerusalem where they're in hiding. Yeah, and two are on the road to Emmaus. Right. And then the group in the, in the closed upper room. Yeah. Uh, and, and Thomas's encounter with mm -hmm. Jesus and all we know about his doubt and all that. Uh, eventually, the Gospels tell us, Jesus did make a brief return with his disciples and he met up with them back by the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, have you thought much about why this um, go back to Galilee? I want to we go back and meet in Galilee again. Well, there were 40 days of teaching mm -hmm. and, and he had walked the land with them for the three mm -hmm. years teaching. Mm -hmm. So going back to some of the places they've been and, and teaching them now with the resurrection in mind was underscoring the truth of what he'd been saying and the impact of it. Yeah. I, I like that. Uh, I think there is a sense in which Jesus wants to take them back to where it all started mm -hmm. and kind of start over again. Because even though th there's been this wonderful three-year ministry, um, they've misunderstood so much yeah. that now they can reprocess in the light of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus kind of wants to go back to square one with them yeah. and uh, start over again. And the place where it all started was back in Galilee. Yeah. And as Luke describes the, the two on the road to Emmaus, after Jesus was with them and then was not with them, mm -hmm. they talked about how their hearts had burned as yeah. he opened the scriptures to them. Right. And so yeah. a... Well, uh, the women uh, are obedient, according to verse 8. They are mm -hmm. hurrying away from the tomb um, and running to, to tell his disciples. We also learn the attitudes with which... <laughs> they were afraid <laughs> and yet filled with joy. Yes. Um, I, I can't wait for us to get to next week's lesson where we're going to see a different but somewhat similar apparent contradiction or a dichotomy. But for, for today, what we have is this dichotomy between fear and joy. Yeah. And um, you, you're tempted to ask the question, well, which was appropriate at this moment? And my answer is they're both yeah. appropriate. I mean, they have just confronted the most unbelievable, as it were, mm -hmm. miracle mm -hmm. uh, of human existence and uh, a, a messenger from God, uh, fear is just the most natural oh, yeah. thing they could have. And yet, they, they believe it enough that they are overwhelmed with joy. Yeah. And this is even before encountering Jesus himself, right? I mean, their, their whole frame of <laughs> reference of life has mm -hmm. been jerked out from under them. With, with people can rise from the dead, yeah. that changes everything. Right. And so there's a, the fearfulness, what's going on, and yet, Joy. This yeah. is tremendous. Yeah. I love the way verse 9 starts. Suddenly Jesus met them. Right. It's just, it's yeah. just so, <laughs> so straightforward. Uh, Jesus isn't going to wait to Galilee. Uh, right. Jesus meets them there. Yeah. And various other Gospels talk about this meeting. But here we see a couple of things. Uh, for one thing, he greets them with a warm greeting. And um, King James has the word all hail, which is very formal. Yeah. And that, that's not so good. Even greetings is a little too formal. Um, the word means rejoice. Yeah. Jesus meets them and says, rejoice, yeah. joy to you. And so <laughs> he, he affirms the joy that they're experiencing yeah. and maybe is helping them deal with their fear. The second thing uh, verse 9 mentions is their natural physical reaction. They just fall on their knees and give Jesus a big hug around his lower legs. Yeah, and grab his feet and worship him. Yeah. And this reminds us that Jesus is not some disembodied spirit floating around like Casper the Friendly right. Ghost or something. Yeah. And it, it also affirms a proper understanding of the other Gospels when they 
describe Mary Magdalene's reaction to seeing the risen Lord and Jesus saying, in the King James, it's touch me not. Yeah. Which it sounds like Jesus saying, oh, you can't touch me. Yeah. Uh, I'm some kind of superhuman um, being here. Yeah. Uh, that's not what he said, really, is it? No, don't hold on to me. Don't, yes. don't hang on. Don't hang on to me. So she has already, as this says, fallen and clasped sure. him, yeah. embraced him. And there's nothing inappropriate about that. That's a very natural yeah. human response. Um, when he says, quit holding on to me, I think what he means is, um, young lady, you've got work to do. Yeah. You're, you're my <laughs> number one preacher of the gospel. Yeah. You, you need to get on back. Yeah, go tell people. Yes. And here there's no scolding or anything. They clasped yeah. his feet and worshipped him. Yeah. Yeah. He says, don't be afraid. <clears throat> yeah. But go and tell. Yeah. Um, so uh, he reminds the women of the mission that the angel has given them. Go and tell my... Now, this uh, here the word brothers is used. That's yeah. different, isn't it? It is. And, and, uh, and, you know, he has brothers, children of Mary and Joseph. Yeah. And... We end, we find indications that James, his half brother, became a believer at the point of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. That his brothers were skeptical, dubious, not believers during his ministry, but with the resurrection were changed. But it probably is not talking about his fleshly brothers. Here. I don't think so. It's more likely the apostles that were so close they were like brothers. Right. And, and that seems to be the testimony in other parallel accounts. Um, well, verse 7 says, go tell the disciples. Mm -hmm. And we I take, take that to mean, as you're saying, the closest disciples. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the last paragraph here has um, the, the attempt of the Jewish religious leaders to cover up the resurrection by paying off these temple guards. And um, it brings us back to that delightful quote that you gave here, all these attempts to try to um, keep the governor placated and mm -hmm. not let word out is very reminiscent Make of, it as of what was it? Make it as secure as you can. <laughs> Remind the us of the spiders? Put their web across the track to keep the locomotive back. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, those of us who live in the afterglow of, uh, of Easter, the afterglow of the resurrection, uh, are, are much like these women and, uh, in that we are called to see and uh, mm -hmm. the reality of the empty tomb. We're called to go and tell. Mm -hmm. That's part of the mission mm -hmm. uh, of discipleship. Uh, we may do it with fear and trembling. But also great joy. But also great joy. And the tomb itself is not enough to do it. It's, it's seeing Jesus. It's the encounter the of the risen Lord. And, oh, yeah. and when we have that encounter, uh, the natural response is to worship. Mm -hmm. And so here we are today on Easter Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful experience of worship here on the first day of the week on Easter Sunday. And I hope you live um, into the, the days and weeks and, and years ahead remembering that um, we're called to live the risen life uh, every day of the year. Thanks for being with us. We look forward to seeing you again next week. This has been In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson brought to you as a ministry of First Christian Church in Johnson City, Tennessee. Our thanks to our teachers that led us for this week's lesson. Join us again next week for another lesson from the International Bible School lesson text. This has been a production of First Christian Church.